Yo, James, have you checked out GitHub Copilot? No, I really haven't. You have to check it out. It's literally writing all of my code. You have to go and sign up. Yeah, I'm pretty skeptical. For real, it's amazing. Go check it out. All right, look, I've intentionally not tried GitHub Copilot. So I guess I'll just explain why. What's up, everyone? My name is James Q. Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And one of those hot topics right now is GitHub Copilot. Now, if you haven't heard of GitHub Copilot, they brand themselves as more than just an autocomplete, but that's basically what it is. It's an extension that you can get inside of VS Code. What it does is as you type in comments or you type function names, it's going to try to complete that function name and not only the function name, but also the entire function itself which sounds pretty exciting, but I've got my reservations for some reasons I'll tell you here in a second. So before I get into that, if you have already used GitHub Copilot and want to let me know your feedback, put those in the comments below. I'd love to see if you're enjoying it or if it hasn't quite worked out for you. For me, you might be thinking I have some sort of like fear of robots or artificial intelligence or something like that, or some sort of like ethical reasons why I'm not really interested in GitHub Copilot. I, I honestly don't really care about any of that. Like artificial intelligence is going to continue to grow. No artificial intelligence has taken over almost anything so far. Like you look at our day-to-day -day, uh, work and it's basically the same as it has been 10 years ago. So I'm not, I'm not scared about that replacing my job by any means. I'm also not really scared about ethical things. Like these are projects that are out there in GitHub and the code is out there for the world and GitHub specifically to look at. So fair enough if GitHub Copilot wants to look through all that and try to make decisions on what your code is or what it should be. What I think people kind of miss when you get into something that's really exciting, like this is something that comes in, they get announced and people are like, oh, I need to use this. And a couple of people make a couple of demos and you probably watched a few other videos. Mainly people probably try like simple functions that GitHub Copilot can easily do. But I think it's, it's really easy to get into the hype and overlook the fact that there's going to be time that it takes to fix or change the code that GitHub Copilot would work for you. Or... If GitHub Copilot has multiple suggestions for you of how the code of like different code blocks that you could choose from, the time that it takes to choose between those two different ones is not insignificant. That does take time or it takes time to fix or change the code that GitHub Copilot might write for you. So I think people immediately get really excited about something and then aren't as practical to look at like, all right, if I were to write this block of code myself, here's how long it would take and then go to try GitHub Copilot and see option one, does that work? Maybe not. Option two, option two works, but I want to change this variable name or so on. Like if you're going in and making those changes for everyone, it probably would have been easier for you to just write the snippet yourself, honestly. Now, maybe one of the benefits is if you have no idea how to write the snippet at all, if you have no idea how to write that function or work with that API, maybe they can give you some help and like, here's how the API actually works. I could see that. I'll show you an example of that here in a second. And I'll show you an example of one that I don't really like. But another thing we need to consider is coding style. Like if you are an individual or you're working with a team, you probably have best practices or a nomenclature for how you name variables and how you structure your code and where you give space between uh, breaking out your code and that sort of stuff. GitHub Copilot can't know that. It can't know your preferences, at least at this point. It can't know your team's preferences. So even if they give you like a 10 line block of code and you're having to go in and change variables and stuff, I just, I really question whether or not that's going to save you any time versus the time that you're going to have to go back and correct or spend time choosing between the options that GitHub Copilot has. Now, again, I haven't tried GitHub Copilot. This is just why I don't really care that much because I'm not really optimistic about that. If you've tried it, let me know in the comments below. But let me pull up the GitHub Copilot landing page and also you one snippet that I do like and one snippet that I'm a little questionable about, question, questionable, questionable about, and tell you why. All right, so here is the GitHub Copilot homepage. It says it's your AI pair programmer. It's more than just autocomplete. It says that in here somewhere. Um, I think this has potential to to be fair, but I'm just skeptical of whether or not this makes sense in the time being. So let me do, uh, let me replay this snippet for you. So this is saying determine whether or not the sentiment of text is positive. So you define this function definition is positive, and then it's going to complete the rest. Seems cool, right? Like that's kind of flashy. It makes sense. This looks like a reasonable thing to do where it's calling the text processing API and it tells you what information to send along with it and so on and so on. 
but I really question like how many different options are there for sentiment analysis in terms of APIs and how much time would I have to spend to choose this one? Like, what if I'm not using that one? How many options will GitHub Copilot provide to me to be able to work with a different sentiment analysis API? And how many times would I have to scroll through different options to get to that point where I actually have that sentiment analysis? I'm not really sure. That may seem like a small detail, but I feel like making a request to a different API could be totally different. So if I were to take this snippet and have to change it, I might have to swap out the uh, the actual uh, URL. I might have to swap out the body. Maybe the text is a different parameter name. Maybe the return value is different. And if I'm going in and changing those three things, like I really question whether or not it's providing me that much value. Now, the flip side of this, I'm going to actually scroll down to another example that I do like, and this is with the Twitter API, if I can scroll down there. So this one I think is cool because by defining fetch tweets from user, that's a like one, that's a very, it's a good name. I like good function names. Uh, this will autocomplete all that you see here where it takes in a screen name and account, which is the amount of posts that you want to get from a different user from a screen name. And so for me, like I have used the Twitter API, but very little. And so I like the fact that this is able to stub out, like even if I have to make some changes, I couldn't have written this code to start from myself, if that makes sense. Like I don't know the Twitter API enough to know what this call looks like. So the fact that that stuff is right there is actually really nice, even if I had to go back and make a few changes. But I just question overall, how many times am I in a scenario where I just have no idea how to write the function? That would be useful, but all the rest of the code that I write, I don't necessarily want GitHub Copilot there. And I've turned off previous uh, autocomplete things that I've had because they get distracting. Like I get distracted by having a bunch of a bunch of options or like the text, the like the pre-text or like the optional text, the text that you could choose from. Um, having that show on the screen gets kind of overwhelming. If you see that constantly, I think that's detracting more than it's providing. So I'm not super optimistic about uh, this sort of stuff, but obviously I'll leave that up to you to make that decision for yourself because this is obviously gonna vary from person to person. So I say, give it a shot, sign up for the beta, try to get try to get access to it and give it a shot and see what you think. And maybe that's enough reason where I should take my own advice and try it too, just to see, maybe I'll do a follow-up video if I do that. But for now, I'm skeptical. That's why I haven't tried it out so far, but maybe you could convince me. Let me know in the comments below if you think I should try it out. So that's gonna wrap up my little rancy video about GitHub Copilot. Let me know what you think and I'll catch you in the next one.